myself kidanam patel from mahatma gandhi institute of technical education and research center navsari electrical engineering department subject name is testing and commissioning of electrical equipments fourth year eighth semester chapter number 2 installation of electrical equipment okay now syllabus content first is inspection of electrical equipment at site second one is storage electrical equipment at site third one is foundation of electrical equipment at site and fourth one is alignment of electrical machines now first is inspection of electrical equipment at site uh, normally the heavy electrical equipment is unloaded from the ship or wagon and brought to site by truck or trailer okay it is the essential that the equipment is unloaded at site without being damaged this is carried by different lifting devices okay planning before receiving heavy electrical equipment at site heavy electrical equipments are used in a factory or power station or substation good planning has to be done before receiving this equipment at site so uploading is carried out by lobbies but skill is necessary is doing this the equipment may get damage or accident may result if proper planning is not done unloading of equipment from the truck is also an art it should be taught in advance regarding the device to be used for unloading the capacity of the device procedure of unloading etc there should be proper place or the place should be prepared for keeping the equipment if possible the equipment should be placed directly on the foundations however mostly it is not always possible so the suitable platform should be prepared and the equipment should be kept on it the following points should be considered before unloading the heavy equipment first is overall size of the equipment weight of the equipment and third one is information of fragile parts and accessories of the equipment here the type of inspections is uh, emergency stops and safety interlocks device is monthly checking okay this is the frequency time period manually testings of rcds it is a its frequency is 3 monthly visual inspections is queries or 6 monthly thermographic surveys like all sites is 12 monthly okay yearly next is visual inspections r2 test and earth loop impedance results using historical r1 values next is earth electrode testing queries it's also 12 monthly okay in dry period like in summer seasons etc visual inspections non queries it's all also 12 monthly visual inspections are to test and earth loop impedance results it's 3 yearly earth electro testings 3 yearly verify circuits conductors are once 3 yearly insulation resistance test 3 yearly okay now uh, before unloading the heavy equipment first is importance points is overall size of equipment okay here inspections of electrical equipment at site the overall size of equipment is most important a uh, length equipment's length breadth and height of the equipment should be known this information is supplied by the manufacturer or it it is a given in the manual if the information is available one can plan about the device to be used for unloading how to unload the way through with the equipment to be taken in building or site the difficulties which may arise 
This saves the manpower, time and efforts. It also reduces the possibility of accidents. Next point is weight of the equipment. Weight is also an important factor to be considered in addition to the size in handling the equipment because device of the suitable capacity can be procured in advance. Chain, rope, crane, sling, rollers, etc. are required for this purpose. So weight of the equipment is also most important while the electrical equipment is. Next is information of fragile parts and accessories of the equipment. In some equipment, the accessories are transported in separate packing but it is not possible in some equipments. For example, if the breather, conservator, etc. are transport parts are not transported separately with the transformer, there is a possibility of damage to these parts during unloading CT and PT are filled with oil. So it becomes necessary that the article remains in vertical position. Now, selection of suitable lifting device for loading and unloading of electrical equipment. Various devices are used for loading or unloading the heavy equipment. The choice of the device depends upon the size and weight of the equipment and the capacity of the lifting devices. Lifting device for loading and unloading of heavy equipment. Device used for loading and unloading the heavy equipment from the transport vehicle is called the lifting device. The number of lifting device are first one is rope pulley block, second is chain pulley block, third is power chain pulley block, shear legs, slings, winches, roller, lever, carbon, snatch block are all are the lifting device okay, to load and unload the heavy equipment. Rope pulley block. This is used for light or heavy equipment. It is used up to 250 kg weight. It is also used in lifting device. Chain pulley block. Equipment of one ton can be lifted by this. Its efficiency is more than the rope pulley block. Power chain block, pulley block. In this type of chain pulley block, the equipment is lifted by using electric motor. This is quicker than the hand operated chain pulley block and can lift more weight. Stair legs. This is one type of tripped tripod. Hook is fitted on the upper side. Chain pulley block is fitted to this hook. This is available in different heights and different capacities. It is necessary to know the safe working load of the shear legs before making use of it. All the three legs should be tied with the help of chain so that no leg can spread. Slings With the help of the sling, the machines can be lifted by tying it at the side suitable place. The length of the sling should be such that the machines can be lifted safely. Winches Winches are used to move heavy load. How to move the load to a small distance after the load is placed in the room. Roller, lever and carbon. Roller and lower levers are used to shift heavy load. Load is lifted up slightly with the help of lever. The rollers are kept below the load or article. The article is pushed with the help of lever and the article is shifted further. Next is snatch block. Snatch block is used to control the directional of movement of a load which is being moved and direct crane. Direct crane is used to move the load at certain height. This crane is easy to use and can be fixed easily. Now safety precautions to be taken while unloading heavy load. Check the safe working load of the lifting devices. 
check by pulling with the switch rope the load will be raised or lower and mark it check whether the article is properly fitted to the hook again check the length of the sling check whether the legs of the saddle legs are tied properly with the chain give proper instructions to all the persons of the team team and give them the list of work to be done see that nobody obstructs the way of passing the article pull rope or chain slowly in the direction of the lifting the article stop after the article has been lifted to some distance and ensure that it is as per planning see that no part of the article is stuck proceed the work only after the all well call from all the members of the team remove the vehicle out through which the article is received after the article is lifted take the article to the proper place with the help of crane again check the platform on which the article has to be placed instruct the person working about the position of the article to be keep now inspection on arrival of equipment and before installation physical inspection of the equipment should be done immediately after it is unloaded it should be checked that no damage is done during transient it should be checked by comparing with the advice not that no part is lost during transient basis of inspection of different equipments are different so we shall obtain information about the inspection of transformer switch gear induction motor separately packed article should not be open in the moist place or in open in monsoon season inspection if supplied by the manufacturer for unpacking the article should be followed care has to be taken not to cause damage to the equipment while unpacking the article so inspections is the most important and movable part or lifting device the bigger parts loading and unloading is very important in electrical equipments now next is storage of electrical equipment at site Uh, the machines should be stored in a clean dry store house having uniform temperature large variations of temperature causes different expansion hence should be avoided heater should be provided to avoid dampness here is some electrical equipment here also put in the big transformers motors circuit breakers etc are also used is in storage site the air in the store room should not have relative more than 68% the temperature should not be below 15 degrees celsius direct sunlight rain water dust gases water smoke should not be present in the store room chemicals batteries gas cylinders explosives should not be kept in the same store room there should be proper pest control no no rats vermin and other trouble some pests are rodents should be allowed in the store room machines should not be kept on mud floor the floor of store should not be subject to vibrations in case of vibrations the machine should be placed on rubber blocks this should be no smoking sign in the store room a uh, receiving electrical machines at site the important points is here the machines are inspected and packed in the factory before dispatch on arrival at site the packing is inspected for transient break if any to packing is then unpacked all the parts and accessories are inspected to see if the materials received is as per dispatch list also the inspection reveals transient damage if any 
If there are any missing items or damage items, the report should be sent to the manufacturer, transport company and the insurance company within three days of the receipt. The following type terminology is used. First is consign to entrance the material to carrier for delivery. Consignee, the person to whom the material is to be delivered. Consigner by whom the material has been sent and consignment the material sent. So this is the most important in electrical equipment storage at site. Now next is foundation of electrical equipment at site. The factor to be considered while preparing foundations on machines. Foundation depend upon the type of machines. Electrical machines can be divided mainly in two types, static machines and rotating machines. Here this is a different types of locations, here is substations, okay, substation, power stations, okay, etc. are the sites. The machines which remain stationary and have no rotating parts are called the static machines. Transformer, circuit breaker are the static machines. There are no moving or rotating part in this. The machines which remain stationary but have rotating parts are called rotating machines like a turbine, generators, motor okay, are the rotating machines. These rotating machine, motor generator are turbine are here in the power plant used. The rotating machine drive the load vibrations are produced when the machine rotates. Foundation is necessary to absorb the vibration in the ground and the machines remain properly on the ground. Thus, the foundation depends on whether the machine is static or rotary. Uh, in foundation cases, the height of the foundation of electrical machines is also important. Place of use of the machines, specific ways of use of the machines, weight of the machines, and easy in maintenance. First is place of the use of machines. Height of the foundation depends upon the type of soil on which the machine has to be installed. If the floor is hard, then the height of the information can be reduced. Circuit breaker are installed in open land so the foundation is decided after studying features like whether the soil is soft or rocky the amount of rainfall possibility of flooding erosion level if the site is at the bank of river or pond next is specific ways of use of the machine each electrical machine is used in a specific way for example insulating oil is used as insulation in transformer, circuit breaker, CT, PT, etc. It is essential that certain insulation level is maintained. For this, the foundation shall be leveled. If the height of foundation is less, the surrounding land is held so that the temperature of the surroundings increases so the oil level increases as the oil becomes hot due to the heat. Thus, oil level increases, so the foundation level of such electrical machines are relatively high. In case of CT or PT or transformer circuit breaker, the safe distance from the ground should be kept to prevent the flashover in the rainy season. Pulley is attached to some rotating machines, turbine or some other machines are coupled to some machines. In such cases, the minimum distance of the 150 mm is kept between the rotating part and the ground. Thus, the height of the foundation is decided considering various features in individual cases. Third one is weight of the machine. If the machine is heavy, it becomes difficult to install the machine on the height foundations. So, if the machines can be installed on foundation with moderate height, if other factories permit. 
for one is easy in maintenance. While deciding the height of the foundations, it is also seen that there is a case in carrying out maintenance and the persons can work easily. Foundation made of concrete is prepared after digging the ground up to certain depth so that the vibrations produced due to the running of the machines are absorbed in the ground. Height of the foundations is decided after considering the above points. Table shows that depth of the foundations in millimeter for electrical machines of different capacities. Depth of foundation in ground. Capacity of electrical machines in HP like 10 to 20 H25 HP. Its depth of foundation in millimeter is 150 to 200 millimeter. The HP machines 25 to 50 HP. The depth of the foundation is 200 to 250. 50 to 75 HP machines 250 to 400 millimeter depth of the foundation. And 75 to 100 HP machines its depth of the foundation in millimeter is 400 to 600. So, length and breadth of the foundation is skipped 150 millimeter higher on all the sides of the base plate. Foundation should be at least 450 millimeter away from the wall. If the foundation is within the four wall, distance of 900 mm from all the walls should be maintained. Difference between foundations for static machines and rotating machines. In foundation of static machines, in this there is only static load of the machine on the foundations. While in rotating machines, in this there is a dynamo, dynamic load also on the foundations in addition to the static load. In static machines, depth of the foundation depends upon the temperature, rain, flood and the type of soil. While in rotating, the depth of the foundations depends upon the weight of machine, distance of rotating parts from the ground and vibrations etc. In static machines, mixture of concrete is of the proportion 1 to 1 gem 2 gem 4 and in rotating machines, Mixture of concrete is the in the proportion of 1 gem, 1.5 gem, 3. In static machines, in this no mechanical power has to be transmitted, so there are no chances of jerk, tensions, vibrations, etc. On the foundations. In rotating machines, as the power is transmitted, there is effect of vibrations, jerk, tensions, etc. on the foundations. In static machines, no questions of resonance frequency arise. In static machine, while in rotating machines, the frequency resonance frequency of the machines affects the foundations. Okay. Now, in foundations, the leveling of foundation is also most important topic. While preparing the foundations, the top surface of the foundation is leveled. This process is called leveling. Spirit level, tri square, string, and plumb are used for this process. The spirit level is placed lengthwise at some distance at one end of the foundation and check that the air bubble comes in the middle between the marks. The surface is leveled where the bubbles does not come at the middle. This process is carried for the whole length and the surface is level along the length. The process is also carried along the breadth. Then using the plumb bob and tri square the four vertical surfaces are made at right angle to the top surfaces. After this water is sprinkled over the foundation for a few days to make it strong. Now the whole theory is important for foundation of electrical equipment at site. Now next is alignment of electrical machines. In electrical machines there are number of equipments are used like a rotating machines, 
टर्बाइन जनरेटर मोटर एंड स्टेशनरी डिवाइस ट्रांसफॉर्मर्स सर्किट पिकर एक्सेट्रा इन रोटेटिंग इलेक्ट्रिकल मशीन नॉर्मली देर इज वन ड्राइविंग मशीन एंड अदर इज अ थ्री वन मशीन बोथ दीज मशीन आर टू बी कपल टूगेदर इट इज एसेंशियली डेट द एक्सेस ऑफ बोथ इट इज एसेंशियल डेट द एक्सेस ऑफ बोथ द मशीन रिमेन इन वन स्ट्रेंथ लाइन दिस इज कोल्ड अलाइनमेंट हियर वी सेल सी हाउ टू मेक अलाइनमेंट एंड कॉन्सिक्वेंस एंड द एक्सेस आर नॉट अलाइंड here it is a wrong positions okay this figure is is a wrong position now introduction of alignment of electrical machines we know that equipment like electrical machines convert electrical energy into mechanical energy or mechanical mechanical energy into electrical energy in this one machine work at a driving machines and the other machines work as a driven machine thus the driven machine work as a load on the driving machines the axis of these machines are set properly so that the transmission and power can be made properly this process is called alignment transmission of power from one machine to another machine is done by two methods in the first method the two machines are coupled together such that center lines of the axis of both the machines remain in one line this this is possible only when both the machines are nearer the another method the machines are kept so that the axis of both the machines remain parallel to each other the power can be transmitted using rope and pulley or gears the adverse effect of misalignment of shaft the following advice effects result when the axis of the two machines are not aligned first is when belt and pulley are used belt does not remain on the middle of the pulley so at high speed the belt slides down of the pulley at high speed this is possibility of accident due to sliding of the belt time is wasted in setting the belt off bearing gets burn out earlier due to excess sieve pressure on the side of the bearing there is a wastage of power noise is produced when gear or coupling is used excessive vibrations and noise are produced gears bearings become hot and worn out early there is a possibility of sharing of the bolts of the coupling foundation bolts get loosed due to vibrations and grip of the foundation on machines become loose bushings of the coupling get worn out okay so here this is the important procedure of alignment of shaft of electrical machines first of all the two machines are placed on foundations nuts are kept loose axis of both the machines are set in one line in horizontal plane the axis of both the machines are placed in one line in vertical plane the required iron strips of required thickness are inserted below the machines while carrying out process number 2 and 3 are above centering of the axis is in height and sides is done alignment is checked by repeating above steps now the all steps are repeated one by one until the proper alignment is achieved paralleling of the axis in horizontal and vertical plane is checked in above steps and if the axis of the machine are to be set in parallel so the two machines are in parallel we check the alignment of the electrical equipment okay thank you